When you studied the position analysis of four bar mechanisms, there were two claims that I made. First, the method that we learned for analyzing four bar mechanisms with all revolute joints can also be used to analyze any closed loop mechanism with all revolute joints with just one single loop. The second claim that I made was that for multi loop mechanisms, in certain cases, you can partition them into single loop mechanisms and then use the same procedure as we had learned for the four bar mechanism analysis to analyze the multi loop mechanisms. In this lecture, we will look at these two claims in more detail. Before we proceed, let us first recap the four bar position analysis. The first step was to assign a vector to each one of the links and that is shown in this figure here. The second step was to write down the vector loop closure equation. In this case, it becomes R2 plus R3 minus R1 minus R4 equal to zero. Recall that there were some choices involved in the first step as to which is the direction we would assign to each vector. But once we have chosen this, the rest of the steps become deterministic. Then we express each one of the vectors in complex exponential form. We expand them using Euler's equation and form two trigonometric equations in two unknown variables. For example, R2 here is a e to the power of j theta 2, where a is the length of the vector r2 and theta 2 is the angle made by O2a with the positive x-axis and theta 2 is measured anticlockwise from the positive x-axis. Similarly, r3 equal to b e to the power of j theta 3. Once we have the two trigonometric equations, we can solve them using the methods that we discussed in class. And recall that we needed to know to solve two types of trigonometric equations and recall that problem one and problem two. What I want to show you next is that knowing how to solve the two types of trigonometric equations that we discussed in class is sufficient to analyze any closed loop mechanism with a single loop as well as some multi-loop mechanisms also. So let us look at the planar five bar mechanism. Here, link one has length L1, link two L2, and so on. Theta two is measured positive anticlockwise, theta three is measured positive anticlockwise, theta four is measured positive anticlockwise, and theta five is measured positive anticlockwise. Vector directions are O to A, AB, CB, and DC. So I've assigned a vector to each one of the links. And the vector Ri is Li to the power of j theta i, where Ri is the vector assigned to link i. So this vector is R2, R3, R4, R5, and R1. In this example, theta 1 equal to 0. So the vector loop closure equation will be OA plus AB equals to OD plus DC plus CB, which is the same as R2 plus R3 equals to R1 plus R5 plus R4. And from here, you can write down the vector loop closure equation in this form by taking R1, R5, R4 to the left hand side. Within the vector loop closure equation, you can substitute Ri equal to Li to the power of j theta i, and you will get an equation with complex exponentials. Then you have to proceed as we did for the four bar linkage expand the complex exponential and form two trigonometric equations by equating the real and the imaginary parts. Two zero. Now this is a problem that I have assigned you for the homework and you will fill in those details in the homework. You need to understand one key aspect here that the degree of freedom of this mechanism is two. So there will be two variables that will be independent variables. So suppose theta two and theta three are the independent variables. 
then there will be two angles that you have to determine which are unknown which will be theta 4 and theta 5 in this case similarly if theta 2 and theta 5 are the independent variables then the two unknowns that you have to find are theta 3 and theta 4 the procedure will be the same so what is the general procedure for position analysis for closed loop mechanisms with single loop first step is assign vectors to each link and write down the vector loop closure equations i emphasize again the assignment of vectors is a choice any choice is good provided you are consistent in the way that you are defining the angles the angles should be defined at the root of the vector positive anti-clockwise from the x-axis we write each vector using a complex number representation and substitute them in the loop closure equation then use Euler's formula expand the complex exponential and equate the real and imaginary parts to zero to form two scalar equations at this point you should stop and think okay what are the degrees of freedom of my mechanism and which one of my symbols are constants which are independent variables and which are unknowns that we have to solve for a n loop mechanism will have degrees of freedom n minus 3 and i am presuming here that the mechanism is a single loop mechanism all the joints are revolute joints so you will have n minus 3 variables that will be known and n minus 1 are the total number of variables so there will be two equations in two unknowns and for the case of n equal to 4 and n equal to 5 you have already seen this this is true even if n is bigger than 5 i re-emphasize that there will always be two unknown variables regardless of how many links or joints you have then you can solve the trigonometric equations using the methods in the uploaded notes and obtain the unknown variables now let us turn our attention to a multi-loop mechanism in particular let's look at the watt six bar mechanism and the second inversion of the watt six bar mechanism and if you recall in the graphical synthesis that you have done in class the six bar mechanism that is the four bar mechanism along with the driver diode was a watt six bar mechanism in the second inversion of watt six bar mechanism the two ternary links are connected to each other by revolute joints in this diagram the shaded link here is a ternary link and the ground is a ternary link and they are connected at O4. To analyze this mechanism, you can first see that there are two loops here. The link 2, link 3, this link and this link forms one 4 bar loop and this, this, this forms another 4 bar link. So the first step is to assign a vector. In the picture on the right, I have assigned a vector to each one of these links here and then you can write the vector loop closure equation which I have written according to the assignment shown in the picture. So to go into a little bit more detail we will first consider the loop O2, O4, B, A and I have assigned R2, R3, R1 and R4 as the vectors as shown in this picture. So the loop closure equation here will be R2 plus R3 minus r1 minus r4 equals to 0. Furthermore, this is the angle theta 2, the angle theta 4, and angle theta 3. So if I call this length as L1, this length as L2, L3, and L4, I can write each one of the vectors here in the complex exponential form. Ri is li e to the power of j theta i now theta 2 is known theta 1 is 0 so i'll have two unknowns theta 3 and theta 4 i'm assuming here that theta 2 is the link that is driving the mechanism so you can solve for theta 3 and theta 4 from this four bar once you have solved for theta 3 and theta 4 you need to now look at the four bar loop O4, O6, D, C. You know theta 4 and you know this angle here because you know this ternary link. So this angle theta 5 
is known, which is also shown here. This length will be L5, this length will be L6, L7, L8. Now here, the fixed link is the link O4, O6 or R8. The angle that this link makes is theta8, which is constant, but not zero. So you have to be careful about that. My loop closure equations are R5 plus R6 equals to R7 plus R8 or R5 plus R6 minus R7 minus R8 equals to 0. And for R7, my angle is theta 7 here. So again, I can write these equations in a complex exponential form. And you will see that theta 8 is known, theta 5 is known, and theta 6 we have to define here like this. So theta 6 and theta 7 will be my unknowns, which I have to solve for. And I can solve for them because I know theta 5 since I have already solved the loop O2O4BA. So this is also an assignment problem and you will be filling in the details in the assignment. Now, if we look at the inversion one of the Stephenson six bar mechanism, we can again analyze this multi-loop mechanism by decomposing it into two single loops. In this case, my two single loops are shown here. So O2, O4, A, B will be one loop and O4, B, C, D, O6 will be my other loop with O4, A6 being the other link. The loop O4, O2, A, B can be analyzed as before. We assign vectors here. and see that in this case i have assigned the vector a little bit differently i have assigned a b instead of b a you could have as well assigned b a it would have been fine after assigning the vectors i can write the loop closure equations for the first loop here and in the way that i have assigned the vectors here the loop closure equation is r2 minus r1 minus r3 minus r4 equals to zero where the vector r3 has this angle theta 3 here this is theta 4 and this is theta 2 theta 1 equals to 0 in this case and i can solve this for theta 3 and theta 4. one thing you will notice here that the second loop that we had o4 b c d o6 in the second loop, it seems that I have five bars. However, after you have solved the first loop here, which is O2, A, B, O4, you will actually know this angle theta five, the angle theta four, and the angle theta eight is fixed. So the only two unknowns will be your angle theta seven, and the angle theta 6 here and if you write down the vector loop closure equation you can solve for theta 6 and theta 7 so the question is how do we know theta 5 you can know theta 5 by simple geometry since you know theta 3 this angle here is 2 pi minus theta 3 so if i expand this line this angle again is 2 pi minus theta 3 and this angle is some known angle alpha so my theta 5 plus 2 pi minus theta 3 plus alpha equal to pi so i'll get theta 5 as theta 3 minus pi plus alpha so from geometry, you can get theta 5, theta 4 you are directly obtaining by solving the first loop and theta 8 is known once you know the design. So theta 6 and theta 7 you can obtain. To summarize, for closed loop mechanisms with multiple loops, you have to first decompose the mechanism 
into multiple single loops so that each single loop has only two unknown variables either from the given data or assuming that you can solve one of the other loops that you have identified. Now this step is an art and this step is not always possible. If it is not possible, that means that you cannot have closed form solutions like the ones we discussed in class. You have to resort to numerical methods to solve this system of equations. Another fact to note is that you can have complicated multi-loop mechanisms where there may not be a unique way to make the decomposition into multiple single loops. The second step will be to identify the sequence in which the loop should be solved so that either you can use the solutions obtained thus far or the angle that is already known to ensure that the current loop has at most two unknown variables. Then you solve each closed loop using the procedure for solving single loops as we have described before. Now I repeat that it is not always possible to analyze closed loop mechanisms with multiple loops using the procedure that we just described. When you cannot use the method presented in this slide, there is one fact that we learned that will be useful to form the equations that you have to solve numerically. And that fact is how to convert a trigonometric equation into a polynomial equation. If you recall, we had this equation p sine theta plus q cos theta equals to r. And we converted into a polynomial equation by substituting sine theta equals to 2t by 1 plus t square and cos theta equals to 1 minus t square by 1 plus t square. This step to convert a trigonometric equation to a polynomial equation is a very useful step. When you have multiple trigonometric variables, for example, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, what you have to do is convert each one of these sine theta 1, cos theta 1 terms to different polynomial variables. So you can use polynomial variables t1, t2, t3. Once you have converted them into polynomial equations, there are many methods for solving systems of polynomial equations one of them being Newton's method. And you can use one of these numerical methods to solve the system of nonlinear equations. It is hard to numerically solve a system of nonlinear equations. You may not even know what are all the possible solutions that are there. You can get one solution or some solution, but getting all the solutions is hard.